Hello, everyone. It is Melissa Reeves with Story Fruition, and I am here for yet another wonderful episode where I get to talk to entrepreneurs, business owners, executives about their business, as well as how they are incorporating storytelling to make their business thrive. And I'm extremely excited today to introduce one of my clients and friends, uh, Tani Sanabria. So I'm going to bring Tani up. Hi, Tani. How are you? I'm great. Glad to be here. Just so that the logo's on me and not you as we talked yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. Thank Hello. You. So Tani is a counselor and a human potential, also known as a life coach. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've yes. been doing it for how many years now? I've been doing counseling for over 20 years, added the coaching theory part into what I do about five years ago. Wow. I, I was on your website. It's integrated growth, right? Mm -hmm. Integrated growth dot com. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at your credentials. You're loaded. <laughs> I love to learn things. <laughs> you guys, it was like a list, a very long list, which is great because I mean, you're going to help people yeah. well their anxieties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I've got to keep keep up with and and grow myself if I'm going to help folks grow, right? Definitely. So let's just talk about like the state of mental affairs. You know, we've been in quarantine. I'm sure mm -hmm. maybe some people probably contacted you, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, our lives turned upside down. Right. And any time that we're dealing with what's unfamiliar, we're going to be discombobulated through that anyway and recalibrating and needing to you know, make some transitions and things like that. So, yeah, a, a, a pretty um, collective um, level of, of struggle for folks. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just you're pent up, you know, and if you're a single person you know, you don't really have as much, like say a family might, they can at least have game night and stuff. But there was a while there that I know, I have a few friends that were just like crawling out of their skin. Mm -hmm. Now there seems to be like this little ray of hope because of vaccinations, at least in our state, are mm -hmm. doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. But then there's a whole nother level of that, right? Like, again, transitioning to something else, right? And human connection is is so important for our own sort of survival and growth. We can't do that by ourselves. That's absolutely true. And, you know, we were talking earlier that I have a friend who works so hard and he's just work, 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 work. And, you know, I'm thinking you should talk to Tani. <laughs> you she can help you make sure you're finding space for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. yes. That kind of connection. Yes. Well, we met, let's see. So we met in one of our networking groups, mm -hmm. um, Plateau Partners for B&I, a little shout out to that group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, we started working together. So mm -hmm. Tawny is a, is a, is a client of Story Fruition. And, and why did you, why did you reach out? What, what was it that you were hoping to attain when we started our journey together? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I wasn't completely clear. I just felt this pull. I knew as a presence-based practitioner, I really do listen to what comes up for me. And I just knew that I needed to work with you. I wasn't sure where we would land, mm -hmm. um, but I knew it needed to happen. And I'm so glad that it did because mm -hmm. it just allowed me to just kind of free up some stuff in here and, and gain some confidence around, um, around telling some stories. That's awesome. And I know it sounds so strange. People are like, what do you mean? You, you pay her for you to tell stories, but people don't really realize like, being a good storyteller takes work, you know, and I have enjoyed watching your own transformation, you know, because you started, you were like, I don't know, and then you'd start a story. And now we have a gorgeous story that we've found um, because it really, I mean, you're gathering people's stories all the time. You're not telling them publicly, but you can gather their situation, change some names maybe, and be able to share stories with other people who might be struggling with it. So storytelling is imperative. You know, it's a priority. And to be able to do it so that the the heartstrings are being pulled correctly, uh, that takes that takes effort. So I'm glad that you've done that and it's been an honor. Um, 
we found our story. So when we first start in the process, I, I call it the story mining. It's not an, an unheard term, but it's story mining and just allow whatever story is going to bubble up from you. It seems to want to come out. So there was a, quite a few stories that we found. Some you're like, I don't know if I'd tell this story. Like, I don't know either, but it came out. So mm -hmm. maybe you will. Like, I don't know. That's I, I have to surrender to creative flow as much as as you do, as, as the story minor, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but there was the story of Jaren mm -hmm. yes. that came out. And... One of the things that I teach is, is that a story, it really is a mind movie. Okay, everyone. So it's, it's the storyteller has this power to guide us through their, their event, their story, their people that they're with and feel it and see it and smell it. And hopefully, you know, if there's tastes, we've got that too. There's senses that we're igniting. And I felt like when we were composing this story, you were hitting them all. You were hitting them all. So would you be so kind as to share that story so that we can kind of hear it and then we can talk a little bit about it afterwards? Yeah, I would love to. Yay. Love to. Okay, so I'm going to go away. I'm going to take myself out <laughs> and just keep you in and enjoy your story. Okay, thank you so much, Melissa. Yes, this is a story of an of a, a early client of mine. I was, I'm 30 years old and I'm in my red truck on my way to meet a boy named Jaron. I'm two weeks into my counseling internship at a community mental health clinic in the Rainier Valley of the Seattle area. All I know about Jaron so far is that he's 11 years old. He lives with his mom and his younger brother. He's black and he's been having some anger outbursts at school. I am to be Jaron's in-home counselor. As I roll up into the driveway, Jaron and his brother are out on the porch. I wonder to myself, hmm, have they been waiting for me? Wondering what I'll be like, what I'll sound like, and who I'll be. I leave my car, my truck, and mom is at the doorway. She puts her cigarette out on the porch and she invites me in. She motions me to sit at the small table in the kitchen. She strikes me as anxious and restless. She's about five foot seven, black, very thin. She begins to tell me about how angry and scared she is. Well, I don't know what they expect. He saw his dad beating me up again two months ago and he called 911 this time. It's not the first time he's seen that happen, but this time he was why the police were there. He yells, he screams, he cries, he blames himself. He hasn't seen his dad since. She begins to tell me a little bit more about the violence in her home. She worries about her boys. It becomes clear why she's afraid and what she's afraid of. if. Jaron stays mad, well, he may end up just like his dad. So I, I, I ask all the questions I'm supposed to ask when I meet a client for the first time, but more importantly, I listened. And I realized the more I listened, the more mom relaxed. As we're finishing up our session for the day, we make arrangements for me to pick up Jaron from school later in the week. I look over at the door, there's Jaron. He's standing there just watching us, almost as if he's looking out for mom, protecting her. I get closer to the door. You know, you might be the nicest white woman I ever met. I look at mom. She sees me and I see her. I think to myself, wow, no one's ever said that to me before. So I pick up Jaron at school a couple days later. What do you wanna do? I don't know, I'm hungry. Where do you want to eat? Could we eat at McDonald's? Yeah, what do you want to get? Uh, cheeseburger, large fries. Could I get a hot fudge sundae? Sure. You know you have to eat the hot fudge sundaes first, right? I didn't know that. Sounds good to me. I had a lot of hot fudge sundaes. That was the first of many trips to McDonald's during our time together. You know what I want to do when I get to high school? I want to play football like my dad. Oh, what else does your dad like to do? And just like that, Jaron grew quiet, almost as if he realized, I don't want to talk about my dad. You know, I have an idea. How would you like to go to a high school football practice? Really? We could do that? Sure. Why not? So before we arrive, I've touched base with the coach to see if Jaron can help out with anything. 
around the practice. Jaron was in his element that evening. Oh gosh, his smile so big from ear to ear. He was helping out the players, hanging out with the players, telling jokes, making fun of each other, got to warm up with the, with the team. He felt included. Ah, oh, I hope that smile never leaves him. And then at some point we found ourselves in a child psychiatrist office, a sunny Monday morning, myself, Jaron, and his mom. His teacher wanted him evaluated for ADHD. She thought, well, get some medication. He'll be easier to handle at school. Within 17 minutes, Jaron is diagnosed with ADHD, given a prescription for medication, and we are sent on our way. I'm heartbroken. How is it possible that an 11 year old is diagnosed in 17 minutes with something that may inform him of who he is for the rest of his life? Mom just hopes that the medication will help with the school issues, so that's one less problem she's got to deal with. But did I tell you about the African drumming camp that we went to over the summer? Jaron was not gonna go unless his brother could go too. You see, Jaron liked to look out for his brother during the summer. He kind of was his caretaker. Oh, what fun we had that week, the three of us. And Jaron became a leader. He was meeting people, connecting with people. He was open and curious and creative. We were singing, we were dancing. Oh, the colors, the energy of the week. So difficult to explain. Oh, you had to be there. It was amazing. Jaron stepped up. He felt safe. Ten months into our time together, it's time for Jaron and I to say goodbye. I'm done with my internship and moving on. And Jaron is just not the same kid I met ten months ago. You see, I'm not in the fix-it business. Humans are not broken. There's, there was nothing for me to fix about Jaron. I couldn't change his situation. I'm 50 years old now, and what I've learned from hundreds of folks that I've talked to who are struggling at different levels, big and small, is that safe connection is what makes growth possible. Disconnection from self, disconnection from others is what underlies the suffering that we experience. So any shift or change or growth, our best selves comes from reconnecting deeply with ourselves and others around us. And that's how I work with my clients. So thank you, Jaron. Wow. <laughs> oh, good job. Wow, Tani, what a beautiful story. What a beautiful story. Um, God, I think about our journey and, and just formulating that and then watching you deliver it like, uh, I don't know, like Meryl Streep. It was. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, so the Academy Award goes to, you know, it was just gorgeous. It was so well done. And, and, uh, and I kind of want to like talk about it a little bit. I'm going to deconstruct with you a little bit mm -hmm. um, for, because I think this is important for our audience to, to start to realize like what you were doing, you were doing very conscientious things. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the mind movie, there was absolutely very clear scenes. I could see the driveway. I could see you in your truck. I could see the boys waiting for you. And then when the mother throws down the cigarette, I could smell the smoke. You know, it's just this little detail. But what is happening is, is that you're you're igniting these senses in the listener. And what's mm -hmm. happening is we're leaning in. I had goosebumps throughout the whole thing. I was riveted. Like you'd take a pause, and that was really, really smart because you were you were you were holding my attention and it was like, what is she gonna share next? And I actually know the story, and I was still there genuinely with you. Mm -hmm. Um little things like she sat me down at the small right. kitchen table. Just that word small. Mm -hmm. created the mind movie of that of that and I could start to in my own mind fill in the rest of the kitchen mm -hmm. right I could just fill it in and I could see Jaron staring at you and now I want an ice cream sundae thank you Jaron for mm -hmm. letting me know that the ice cream sundae comes first I did not know that 
I don't know if the audience knows that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> Everyone should know this. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the scene inside the, um, the, the um, when you're going from the highness of the of the football game and, and, and hanging out to the sadness of the, the, the psychiatrist's office and your genuine disappointment of how an 11 year old could get diagnosed by something that could define his life. Mm -hmm. That was so powerful. And it really allowed me to see within your heart mm -hmm. how you feel and care about your clients, which is setting us all up for the end where you get into the human connection. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in this situation, this story shows us who Tani is as a professional and how you take your work. And so good job on delivering that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's not what it was like in the beginning. Remember, Melissa? <laughs> <laughs> it takes some work. Yes. Yes. yes your support and guidance and the way in which you just gave room and space for whatever comes out to come out. And then we worked to, to really incorporate and keep the, the most important pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't have done it by myself. Well, no. they, I'm glad I was here for you, but this is more about you. I want to do some more compliments. Another thing that you did that yeah, you hadn't done that much in, in what would be what I'd call rehearsal. So, our process is sort of like, it starts off like a journalist where we're mining stories, then we start to write them, then we storyboard them, then we go into rehearsal and we rehearse, rehearse, and we keep cutting and cutting and we, we add things to give it really that gusto. Because this is going to be a story that you'll probably tell quite a few times. Mm -hmm. um, I think you could tell this story even at The Moth. Like, let's hear that moth <laughs> on NPR. <laughs> but yeah, if they do a, any sort of story that's like, you could talk about camp, because you've got two camp moments in there. You could do uh, human connection, um, isolation, you know, like the, whatever their theme is, you have the story that can morph into that. Mm -hmm. uh, so just put that in your noggin and think about it. But your dialogue work, your dialogue work was really nice. And that gives a really great uh, dimension to a story. So a lot, of a lot of times people would say something like, you know, then he asked me if we could go to McDonald's versus mm -hmm. can we go to McDonald's? Mm -hmm. You know, like you became him a little bit and it just adds that dimension mm -hmm. that the really good storytellers do. Mm -hmm. So, good job, lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, very cool. So, so let's talk about uh, integrated growth. So, you know, we're coming out of, we're coming out of uh, quarantine, mm -hmm. new sets of anxieties and re-entering society are going to have their own because some people are kind of like I kind of like being cooped up after a while yeah what mm -hmm. do you see what do you see in the future as far as uh, mankind psychological events <laughs> oh gosh oh gosh like the yes this is so influential to us um, and kids and we don't even have any idea about how this is going to impact us five ten years down the road but what I love about what I do, is that it, if I'm building connection, I'm doing what I need to do. And we have to start there, right? Whatever the things pop, whatever shows up later, basic connection, basic um, ability to be in our bodies, to connect with ourselves is what's going to get us through whatever shows up. So can you do me a favor and really define to you when you say connect, when you connect to yourself, what does that mean? Yeah. So it means sort of getting out of our head. We oh. spend a lot of time in our head. We want to know what's going to happen next. We want to prepare for that thing and the other thing. And we want, and we're telling ourselves stories about what things were like before, what things are going to be like later. And that was part of my, Part of the importance of, of that uh, moment of him being diagnosed is like, he's 11. Yeah. This is something that is going to be a part of his story for forever. And does it even need to be? I don't know. Right. Right. But that's the part. We hang on to that. And that's all a headspace. Our connection is in our body, mm -hmm. in our belly, tuning in. Mm -hmm. not 
up here analyzing, evaluating, problem making, problem Chattering. Making. Yeah. Chattering yeah. is the hard one. That's yeah. so, yeah. So deep breathing in yoga and the things that you do can help us bring that back. But also when you said tune in, um, I get turned on on those sort of those kind of phrases because I, I take that as you're being completely conscious mm -hmm. of things that are coming your way because you are out of that headspace. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. turned down the chattery stories mm -hmm. and you're allowing the next story to unfold in front of you and just flow with it. Does that yes. Yes. If, yes, if you imagine like the kink in a hose, Mm -hmm. So when we're up in our head sort of doing our thing about past, future, future stuff and who we are, we're kinked. Mm -hmm. we're, tense. we're tense in our body. There's not a flow. When we get into our belly, we start to and create safety in the body and tune in awareness. We and, and, and cultivating presence, we end up unkinking. So we restore flow from that space. And, and then... If we're not kinked, whatever arrives in life, we are ready to engage with it in the way that matters most to us. Yeah, it's like a surrender. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Well, you clearly love your work. You're good at your work. You're great at your work. Um, how can how can people find you? And who, who do you feel as though might be the more likely to need this kind of teachings, if you will, in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we all need it. Um, any folks that are sort of like stuck in the needing to do the right thing, perfectionism, they double, they, they uh, question themselves, right? Um, college age students, maybe ones that are going in or coming out, oh, that's a great age if we can catch them early to help um, broaden perspective. And uh, yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, that is such a stressful time. Yeah, I have some storyteller friends and we're doing these really cool stories where they're, they're called true logs. And so like if you and I were connected on something that we had com in common, I would start the story and then, I, and then I'd stop and then you'd start your story mm -hmm. and then I come back and I start and we do this in three acts. Mm -hmm. And there were two women that, that are doing a story about eating disorders. Yeah. One, one, she overeats and the other one, she's anorexic. And they're both around that 17 to 19 year old age thing. And it's like, it's just a stressful time. So as parents out there, if you're noticing the stress of your children, mm -hmm. sometimes taking them to a third party like, like Tawny mm -hmm. is the best thing that you can do because they don't want to talk to you, your mom, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I was that way. I was like, my mom's like, you look a little skinny. I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I was not fine. <laughs> <laughs> my kids didn't even want to talk to me. Like, oh, you don't know anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. See? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. But uh, <laughs> so anyways. So, uh, okay. So we can reach out to you. What's your website? So integratedgrowthcoach.com. Perfect. You can reach out to me there and yeah, send me a line, ask me any questions, whatever. However I can help. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you for uh, sharing a boy named Jaren. That's what we named her. That's her name of her mind movie story. But it's uh, it's a beautiful story. And um, I look forward to more stories hearing them from you because you've learned some pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, all right. Thanks, Tani. Um, I just want to thank everyone again for another episode of the Story Fruition Executive Series. And um, Remember, just keep listening for stories and tell your stories because they are your wisdom. They are your wisdom. And as a business professional, they will take you far. So again, thank you. And we will see you in the next episode.